Hi. In this session, we'll be covering Uber's journey to uh, Redis cluster. And we'll start off with a quick introduction why we moved towards Redis cluster. Um, we'll do uh, go through some of the evaluation that we did. We'll talk about how we manage Redis cluster today, share some results, key learnings, and next steps for the team. My name is Anders. And um, together with Bisheng and Ashin, we make up the caching team here at Uber. I'm presenting today together with Bisheng, who is going to be covering the latter part of the presentation. Uber uh, provides mobility and delivery services in over 10,000 cities across the world. And it's a big user of, of Redis. We have about 20,000 Redis containers in, in production. And Redis has a long history at Uber. When I joined in 2016, it was used for many different things. Um, it continues to be a key component of the stack, but today the main use case really is uh, just caching. And if you take a look at the diagram, it gives you an overview of what that looks like. Services typically have a dedicated cache cluster that they connect to uh, via a Redis proxy. In our case, that's a heavily modified version of Twin Proxy. Twin Proxy is then responsible for sharding requests across Redis backends. However, there is no persistence or replicas um, for those backends. So if a node fails, data is lost. And we started to see some new use cases come up where, um, where having higher data availability was very important. One new such use case was um, where we want to use Redis as a serving layer for data that was only periodically being refreshed, in this case from Hadoop. So losing data here uh, was not an option. So we had a few different options. Um, Redis cluster was not just what went for it right away, but we also looked at um, you know, improving the sharding layer, for example. But Redis cl cluster really stood out um, in its maturity and, and its support for slot migration and replicas, etc., it really provided us with the building blocks that we thought we would need to meet our requirements. So the, the project uh, focused on two things. One was to do a very thorough evaluation of Redis cluster. And then assuming that went well, building out the control and management planes that we, we would need to manage this at scale. So before going into two, those two things, I'll give you just a quick overview of uh, Redis at Uber. So we run in Docker containers with host level networking. The default version of Redis today is version five, but we are currently validating uh, version six. Uh, because our environment doesn't allow uh, any sort of static ports, we can't use the default behavior of Redis cluster of assigning you know, the Redis port plus 10,000 as the cluster bus port. So we have a small patch applied to Redis that allows us to, to specify uh, the cluster bus port that we need. And on the side here, you kind of have a quick overview of some of the key um, config um, settings that we have. So for the evaluation, um, we really needed a tool to evaluate the, the functionality and performance of Redis cluster, as well as Redis cluster clients. Um, and we have uh, multiple languages that we need to do this for, in our case, Go and Java. And to, to satisfy this, we built RC test, uh, which is a generic uh, testing tool that allows us to automate the testing process and do it in a repeatable fashion, which is obviously important. And it runs benchmarks and gives us some comprehensive stats. Specifically, what we wanted to get insight into was the, the behavior of Redis client and, and cluster um, when slots are being moved around, uh, if there's slot fragmentation, something we'll get into uh, more detail later, and also what happens during failure scenarios. What happens if a uh, primary becomes unreachable for a short period of time, for example, or if it crashes. And during this, we did uncover um, uh, a bug in the Java client that we were testing in that it was 
failing to send uh, asking commands when it was being redirected to a different primary. Uh, that bug has since been fixed. And on the side here, you can kind of see a, a list of uh, scenarios that we are evaluating. RCET test, like I mentioned, also provides um, fairly rich um, metrics. For example, we can we get some insight into what Redis cluster is doing by looking at the cluster bus traffic. We can see what the clients are doing by looking at the cluster commands uh, and how many they are issuing. And then, of course, there's the benchmark results. How many? What's the QPS? What's the latency we're seeing? More importantly, what does the opt, ops trend look like during various uh, management operations? So. After all this, I, we did a very thorough um, evaluation of Redis cluster and we were happy with the results. So we moved forward with the management uh, framework and that's uh, the part that Bisheng will be covering next. Hello everyone, my name is Bisheng. First, I'll give you an overview of our management control plane. Before digging into the diagram, let me give you some context on our production environment. Our environment is large-scale, dynamic, and heterogeneous. We are running over 20,000 Redis containers across thousands of hosts. Those containers are frequently being replaced to mitigate hardware failures or to optimize resource efficiency. We also have both on-prem and cloud hardware, and they span across multiple DCs. To navigate through such an environment, we have built a fully automatic control plane for the operational management of Redis cluster. Let's take a look at the diagram, starting from the top left, where we have the Cadence workflow. Cadence is an open source orchestration engine to run your business logic. A workflow is a key abstraction in Cadence. You can think of it as a process with multiple steps. In our control plane, every management operation has a corresponding workflow. Each step of the workflow performs some action within the Redis control service, which is the large blue box in the diagram. The Redis control service has two components. The first one is the container lifecycle control. It talks to the stateful management platform at the bottom. This platform is not only meant for Redis. It's a common platform for managing over 100,000 storage containers inside Uber. The other component in the Redis control service is called Redis cluster control. It is responsible for sending Redis cluster commands to the Redis servers to perform cluster operations. For example, when forming a new Redis cluster, it sends the cluster meet commands to each Redis server. This low-level cluster orchestration is done through the cluster management library, which we'll provide more details later. What is not shown in the diagram is our emergency tooling called RC Cattle. It is built on the same cluster management library, and it can be used if this automatic control plan is down. The next topic is how we manage issues of a Redis cluster. Our control plane has a mechanism to detect cluster issues and mitigate those issues automatically. We've listed some of the example issues here. The diagram on the right shows the life cycle of issues in our control plane. On the top, the goal state describes the target state that we want our cluster to be in. The control plane will apply goal states to the Redis nodes and also collect their actual states. From the actual states, issues can be detected. After detecting the issues, the control plane will automatically start workflows, which will modify the goal state to remedy the issues. On the left, we listed the steps of our cluster repair workflow. It is a centralized workflow to address different kinds of issues and ensure that a cluster is healthy. It's worth mentioning that we also have concurrency control on our workflows to ensure that we don't start multiple repair workflows against the same cluster. Otherwise, they may step on each other's toes. Sometimes, however, manual intervention is needed to resolve the issue. For example, when there is a catastrophic failure or when an issue persists even after the control plane tries to resolve it. For those scenarios, we have a monitoring system 
that can fire alerts to notify human operators. Moving on to the next topic, let's now take a closer look at the cluster management library. This library is a foundation for our emergency tooling, the test framework, and also the management control plane. The motivation of developing this library was that we needed a way to interact with Redis nodes uh, with cluster commands. You may wonder why we didn't use Redis CLI, which also had uh, has a cluster subcommand for achieving similar functionalities. The first reason for not using Redis CLI is that it's a monolithic CLI tool without an exported library. Being a CLI tool makes it hard to integrate with our internal toolings and services. We don't like the idea of having to execute a CLI command on every cluster operation. Besides that, error integration uh, would also be difficult without well-defined error code or error status. The second reason is that uh, it's hard to extend it to understand the environmental differences, such as the concept of failure domains. Therefore, we made the decision to develop our own cluster management library in Go. And here we listed some of the features of the library. We will take a deep, uh, deep dive into the first two features and see what problems they solve. The first feature we are looking at here is row assignment based on failure domain. It is meant for enhancing the availability of the cluster. The context of the problem is that when we create a new Redis cluster, one necessary step is to determine a topology of the cluster. For example, which nodes will become primaries, which nodes will become replicas, and how they are connected. It turns out that if we know the failure domain of each node, we can construct a cluster topology in a way that improve failure tolerance of the cluster. Now let's take a look at our goal. The goal is that a cluster should tolerate the loss of Redis nodes in a single failure domain. The domain here can be a rack or a pod or an availability zone, depending on the particular use case. To achieve this goal, there are two requirements to meet. The first requirement is no failure domain contains the majority of the primaries. Otherwise, we have the risk of losing the majority of the primaries and the cluster will be completely uh, down. The second requirement is no failure domain contains a primary and all its replicas. Otherwise, we have the risk of losing a primary and there's no replica to take over. The first requirement here is relatively easy to, uh, to meet. We just need to make sure that the number of primaries in each failure domain is smaller than the threshold. But it's worth mentioning that there has to be at least three domains to make it possible. What's more interesting is the second requirement. We found that it can be turned into a classic graph problem and be solved by a standard algorithm. And this will be shown in the next slide. Let's take a look at uh, this diagram, starting from the top left. The failure domain in question here is a zone. There are three zones in the picture. The first zone has three nodes. The second zone has two nodes. And the third zone has one. Notice that the nodes are already marked in different colors because their rows have already been determined. As you can see, each zone has exactly one primary. So the first requirement has already been satisfied because no zone contains the majority of the primaries. What is remaining now is to match each replica with one of the primaries. We want to make sure that if any of the zone fails, there is always a replica to take over a failed primary. The first step to solve this problem is to convert the placement information into a graph. Each node becomes a vertex of the graph. The important part is that we only add an edge between a pair of primary and replica when they are in two different domains. An edge here is a potential match that doesn't violate our requirement. 
you can see in the graph that uh, node P1 has an edge to R3, but not to R1 or R2. Now, within this graph, the problem of finding a replica for each primary has been turned into a maximum bipartite matching problem, which can be solved by the ford fulkerson algorithm. At the bottom right, a matching found by the algorithm is marked in red. Once we have the matching, the final step is to convert the matching back to a cluster topology, and one can verify that the resulting topology satisfies both of our requirements. And this is all we have to say about uh, the row assignment feature. The next feature of the library is the ability to control sloth fragmentation. Let's first look at what it is. Slot fragmentation refers to the scenario where slots are assigned in non-contiguous blocks. On the right, we have two examples. In the first one, each node owns a continuous range, and there are only four slot fragments in the cluster. This is a good state. The example below is an extreme scenario where the cluster has 16,384 slot fragments because each slot is isolated and becomes a slot fragment by itself. The problem of slot fragmentation is that cluster slot commands could lead to substantial server-side memory consumption. For your context, the cluster slot commands are sent by the Redis client to get the current state of the slot ownership. And we observe that when a cluster has around 4,000 slot slot frag fragments and when we had uh, when we used the go redis client with a hundred pool connections the redis server could have uh, a five gigabyte memory overhead without considering the actual data being stored and this could lead to oom error if the container is not allocated enough memory unfortunately redis cli has no control of slot fragmentation when fixing a cluster with uncovered slots, it assigns the slot randomly, which could easily lead to thousands of slot fragments if there are thousands of slots to assign. Our library and tools are aware of this problem. RLC Cattle ensures that the number of slot fragments has a configurable upper bound by assigning slots in contiguous blocks. And this wraps up our discussion on the cluster management library and also the technical part of our projects. After building those tools and the control plane, what are the results? The result is that we are now able to run Redis cluster in production, which unlock many new use cases. The, the, the use cases listed here were already mentioned in the background section. Our autom automation framework has allowed us to run more than 20 Redis clusters, and we have nodes that are being replaced daily without any intervention. However, we are still hitting some client-related performance issues, and those issues have been harder to track down. This is because Redis cluster clients are more complex than the normal Redis client, not to mention that there are different implementations in different programming languages, and we are still, so we are still looking into those problems. Here are some of the key takeaways that you may find helpful. Firstly, there are two commands that we found very useful during our cluster evaluation. They are debug sleep and debug sec4. You can use them to simulate error scenarios like a network issue or a uh, Redis server crash. Secondly, we observed that for our use cases, Redis cluster consume more memory than non-cluster setup. So be aware of memory consumption if you are uh, migrating from a non-cluster setup. Thirdly, if you ever run Redis cluster without persistence, make sure there is a restart delay. Otherwise, the replica can drop its data if the primary crashes and restarts immediately. This is because if the primary restarts too quickly, uh, there is not enough time for the replica to take over, and all the data on the node will be lost. Here are the next steps of our Redis cluster efforts. As we talk about in the background section, Uber has a lot of existing caching use cases based on the previous Redis solution. The long-term goal of us is to move those use cases 
to Redis cluster to consolidate our product offering. But to do that, there are two things that we need to tackle. The first one is to support automatic migration of fail slots, especially when a cluster doesn't have replicas. This is because we want to, uh, for caching use cases, we want to like, uh, we would like to run Redis cluster without replicas to optimize the hardware efficiency. The second one is to support cross DC replication for Redis cluster. Only after that can we migrate our existing cross DC use cases. Here are some additional resources to read about if you are interested. And that's the end of our talk. Thank you for tuning into our talk, and we hope that you have learned something from our journey to Redis cluster. Feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.